spring meet ends, summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th.
Welcome to Thursday today at Keeneland. Scott Hazleton, Gabby Godet with you. Wet again. We expected it. We anticipated this was going to be the case. No turf racing today, so there are a lot of scratches and changes mm -hmm. just like yesterday. So some on-the-fly handicapping, at least for us. You've got plenty of time for those later races as well for yourself handicapping and for those coming out here to Keeneland. But uh, looking beyond today, I think it's going to be good as far as the weather is concerned. But Beautiful also, this weekend. Also, you've got to anticipate that the turf course is going to have some juice in it. Yeah. Once, once we get the opportunity to get back on the turf for those big races starting tomorrow with the grade one makers, Mark Mile. And uh, Jenny Wiley Jenny on Wiley, Saturday yeah. as well. So, yeah, uh, it's definitely going to be a very soft, squishy turf out there. So handicap accordingly. You know what I think today is a good day for? Those rolling doubles. Because in these off-the-turf races, you really want to make sure you get all the scratches, obviously. But sometimes I like to just take one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, pace myself. Today is a good day for those doubles. All right. Every day is good, it but is especially a, today. It is. And also, it's a, I feel like you had more to say. Okay? I did. but Nice outfit, by the way. I was going to say, we matched today, so maybe that's going to be good. <laughs> we did not coordinate, nope. nor did we plan this. We don't talk outside of this show. No. I don't talk to her ever. <sighs> Man. Stop texting me late at night. <laughs> Super high five carryover. Toyota Super high five, high five carryover. That's in the ninth and final over $7,400. So make sure you get involved in the Toyota Super high five for race number nine, our nightcap. Let's go back to yesterday. As we said, it was a wet one. We start with race number four, top of the street for Kenny McPeak and Brian Hernandez Jr. He lasted, and he's a horse that'll be running through the Keeneland April sale ring at the end of this meet on closing day. He's an April sale entry, uh, but he got his picture taken before heading to the sales ring at the end of the meet. Samarita is next, and this horse uh, was very impressive on that sloppy main track as well. A Keeneland sales graduate. He gets the victory uh, for trainer Jose Rodriguez. You can see everybody in the winner circle there yesterday. And then Native Land, this was a very gritty win for trainer Riley Mott. Yeah, came off the rail, dug in. Keeneland grad, congratulations to Riley Mott and Junior Alvarado as uh, the wire came up right at the short stretch, but uh, one to keep an eye on. And then Pipeline did what he was expected to do in the nightcap. Yes, he did. He had so much back class. This was a horse that competed in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile at one point. He finished third at one point in the grade one forego behind Cody's Wish, and his class came back to the forefront yesterday in the nightcap. The jockey trainer standings, Tyler Gaffleon, Jose Ortiz, Irad Ortiz in the top three. Luis Saez, he is four off the pace from Tyler Gaffleon. And Junior Alvarado picking up that second win yesterday with Native Land for Riley Mott in race number seven. Wesley Ward, one clear of Chad Brown, two in front of Bill Mott. And then Brad Cox and Todd Pletcher tied with two, along with Bill Mott, excuse me, for that third position in the trainer's standings. It's been one we haven't seen streaks, right? Mm -hmm. I don't I can't recall and I know that we're what this is day 5 of the spring meet where we've seen a jockey put together a 3 4 win day. I believe Jose there Ortiz. was one. Jose did. Yes, good yeah, call. He, Jose got, he won 3 in one day. But We'll, we'll see if that changes. I don't know that it necessarily will. I mean, I, you never it's know. It's tough to you do with this it colony. Is. Oh, it's my gosh. It's the toughest beat to win at. And they're all bringing their A game. I mean, Jose on that one day, phenomenal. Tyler had some awesome rides, especially yesterday. Saw Brian. I think Brian was the difference maker in top of the street yesterday. And all of those things matter with this very condensed meet. Let's go to WKYT for the Thursday weather. Showers, thunderstorms, good possibility again at Keeneland. Rainy already as uh, we are looking across uh, central Kentucky. And as uh, the day plays out, I think we get in on more thunderstorms. Temperatures generally going to hover in the 60s out there while it's raining. That could take a bite out of some of those highs. Now, if we get enough clearing, we could see maybe those numbers get closer to 70. But I, I really think we're going to get covered up with rain for an extended period of time. You get toward the afternoon and evening hours here. And I think we start talking thunderstorm. And that could also lead to some heavier rain. So you've got wind that could come in to play, you got heavier rain, and then you've got that thunderstorm element that could also be passing through the area. So it could make a very tricky day out at the track. So good luck. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's kind of drizzling right now. It's more of a mist, but we'll see how the weather uh, changes over the course of the afternoon. And it's a changing thing always when it comes to 
to the weather here in central Kentucky. We were just texts that we look like adorably dressed siblings. <laughs> Right. What a compliment. <laughs> Let's go to the track conditions. Open this up a little presented bit by so John Deere. Okay. Sloppy yeah, and off the turf course to start the day. I, I don't think it will change with the rain that's going to be coming uh, in and out and just continuous, it seems, for the afternoon. So uh, we anticipate sloppy uh, mm -hmm. conditions for the afternoon for what it's worth. Let's get to our full card selections for the day. Make sure you download the Keeneland Race Day app to stay in tune with the ever-changing we Weather changes. I'm I'm at a loss for words right now. My mind is, is <sighs> let me take it from here. About Scott. a lot of things. Uh, let's, let's, let me take it from here. We agree in the fourth. We agree in the fifth, in the sixth, in the seventh. So yeah, I mean it's kind of one of those days. We scratch down. I, I'm not surprised. Hopefully, it's good for both of us. Well, that's you know, that's what we can hope for today. Let's hope. Let's hope that we can get it rolling. Social media at Keeneland Racing on X at Keeneland on Facebook, Instagram at Keeneland, at FanDuel TV on X as well. And make sure you download the FanDuel TV Plus app, Roku, Amazon, Fire TV, Apple TV is where you can access FanDuel TV Plus and catch that uh, coverage of Keeneland each and every race day and from around the world for that matter when it comes to FanDuel TV's uh, first class racing coverage. Race number eight is our featured event at a mile and an eighth. Now on to the main track, you'll see the scratches that have come in thus far, the inside two, the one, the two, the five, the eight, nine, and 10. Also the two main track only entrants, Giant Game and Hayes Strike, both scratch. The number 12 horse limited liability is green lit, at least for right now. I thought that he would be one of those that, that might come out of this race, mm -hmm. but Shrug McGahee is going to uh, take a shot with this son of Kitten's Joy on the off track for the time being, and he's a horse that he's got a lot of class. I mean, we're going to go back to a race. This is all we've got is, is turf racing for this five-year-old um, where he was running at Aqueduct in the Red Smith Stakes, and prior to that, he was third in the Sycamore this is just tougher competition. I mean, it's much like the horse for Sharitavo Pipeline in the nightcap yesterday, where he's running now in a third level allowance race, that he's got to run better than what we've seen from him as of late. His last win was here at Keeneland, uh, back against second level allowance company. Uh, he's just, this is a race where if he handles the off track, and that's the big question, how is he going to handle the off track? I think that he can outclass this group. I do think that Santorini, though, can get out in front of him, the number 11 mm -hmm. horse. That's why I've got him second. Here's that candy ride uh, topside bloodline that we talked about yesterday that is so prevalent when the racetrack comes up off as we have today. So I think you've got to give a strong look to the 11 Santorini and then the number four horse, Uncle Jake for Carlo Vaccareza. Um He's got speed. He's by Uncle Mo. I think that well, dirt's going to be just fine for him. So 12, 11, and 4. And I honestly don't know what to expect from the 12. I, I know. don't know. He could just lag behind the field today. Yeah. The, that was my concern with the 12 is that <clears throat> horses usually with that proverbial turn of foot on the grass, it does not transfer well onto a main track, whether it's fast, muddy, sloppy, anywhere in between. Horses like that just have a better time of it on the turf. So I did go against him. I didn't use him in my top three. The four, Uncle Jake, is going to be the top selection for me. I think he can use his speed to his advantage, and he's a horse that's just been in very good form lately. He won at the fairgrounds two starts back. It was an easy field. It was a field of four that day, an off-the-turf event, but then he came back to win a legitimate two-other-than-allowance last time out at Turfway. So I think he, he can get the jump on the field with Joao Rosario. If he doesn't, then the seven, Gunton Rowe, I think could be pressing him the entire way. And I just want speed horses in this race. I don't want horses that are going to be lagging behind the field. So my uh, angle with this was I think it's going to be the speed will either come from the four or the seven or both, and one could maybe outlast the other. And then the 11 won't be too far off of it. I just think those other two horses are going to be faster. This horse is probably going to get a mid-pack trip under Flavian Pratt. That is race number eight off the turf, our featured event. And we move along to race number six, my key race, one of my key races of the afternoon. And you can scratch the one, four, five, seven, eight, eleven, and twelve. And this is an off the turf race as well. Story hour on the outside, who will show you in just a bit one of his more recent races, very well could end up being 
uh, the favorite in here. But I also think that the two, uh, Rotown, I liked her coming into this race on okay. turf, and I'm fine with her on this off track here today. This is a Motown Philly for Brian Lynch. She's won three in a row. She's run on the synthetic. She's run on the turf. She broke her maiden on the dirt at Gulfstream in February of last year. Now, obviously, we're going back to the video from the 3rd of March when she was competing on the grass where she was able to lead him gate to wire. But I don't... This is one of those horses that I felt strongly about either way, turf or coming off the turf in this situation. She's got quickness to her. She's been very versatile over the course of her career. She has to have early position. I mean, mm -hmm. that seems to be the key to her. And when she's run bad races, she was in too tough. I mean, that's just simply what it comes down to. She's found her form as of late. The sons and daughters of Motown, Turf or Dirt. There's a Motown filly that Steve Asmussen has that I can't think of her name that we saw at Oaklawn Park uh, run two months back now that absolutely flies over the dirt. And he himself, Motown, was a grade one winner on turf, winning the, I believe it was the Hollywood Derby uh, down at Del Mar. So I'm I'm all in on Rotown there. The 13, of course, you've got to respect the main track only entrance. She just won on the slop, outside draw. We'll see how she handles that with Joel Rosario. That's a rider change on story hour. And then the number three horse, my third selection, Spanish for Todd Pletcher. I mean, he's shown speed. He's by, she's by Caraconti. How she can handle the off track, I, I honestly don't know. But they're going to take their shot here today down on the inside. She may not be too far off of Rotown because of the the yeah. draw that she gets as well, which I think makes her dangerous. I would agree with that. I think Spansive, we saw her settle far off the pace in her last two starts but considering the dynamics of this race and that row town kind of looks like the clear-cut speed i don't think that she can let her go in front of her too far so spansive is going to be the second selection for me i agree with you on the two row town i did pick spansive on top when i originally handicapped this race for the turf uh, because spansive had a brutal trip last time out so that is something to consider she checked hard i thought she should have run a lot better there's a loud one back there. Um, the uh, So the two row towns going to be the top pick for me. And then I accidentally sent in the 12. It was the 13. So the 13 is supposed to be my third selection. Did we show the backtrack for story hour? No, let's no. roll it. All right, let's roll it. Last time out, this was at Oaklawn over that sloppy sealed track. So that's obviously something to consider. And he beat, she beat a mare in that race by the name of Insensitive, who would come back. That was, I'm talking about her last race. But when you go back to this effort, this was a very, very good effort, even in defeat. This was back on the 19th of October in the fall of last year right here at Keeneland, uh, where she did suffer that really narrow defeat. It was a good effort, though. And obviously, it's nice to see see that she is capable uh, locally on the dirt. I think I can't make... Uh, tr try to figure this out along with me. So we've got uh, Joel Rosario on Story Hour. They they give preference, right? The jockey mm -hmm. gives preference. On a main track only entrant, you know it's going to be on the main track if the horse is going to run, but first preference goes to the 10 strikingly spun to Joe Sharp, who goes here today. Well, Joel Rosario is on the 10. Oh, the 10. I mixed that up. Okay. Yeah. So Joel is on the 10. All right. Gaffleone is on, gives a priority to the MTO. That makes sense now. Yep. All right. So Gaffleone on story hour, the 13. Got it. Joel on the 10. You're on top of that. If I hit, if I'm playing in exacta, let's just say theoretically, uh -huh. and I'm going all and then one underneath, what would that cost? Say it's like a Whatever nine, nine the number field. times one. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Can you do that math in your head? Do I need to get the calculator One times out? nine times times one. I've got it. <laughs> uh, we're going to move along uh, in the card to race number nine, the nightcap. And this ninth race, the Toyota Super High Five race, scratch the one and the five. And what's your direction here in race number nine? I'm going to go to the six upswell, and I know that some people might look at this Phillies record and think, okay, well, she improved going to the turf in the past three starts. She finally broke her maiden last time out, but I don't think that necessarily was the case. I actually thought she ran against some really tough horses at the maiden special weight level when she was running uh, there. This is a look at her last race going wire to wire over that yielding ground at the fairgrounds. But yeah, prior to that, she had some dirt efforts. I just think the class relief helped and Paul McGee has gotten her back into a really good spot. I also think they figured out how she wants to be ridden. Brian Hernandez Jr. was aboard her for this win last time out. It was a really strong, aggressive ride. It was a slow pace. I'll give her, uh, I'll give you that, but it's just uh, one of those scenarios where I think, you know, that is going to serve as a confidence booster. 
And I, looking at other horses in here, clearly the number 10, uh, perfectly wicked, is a horse that you have to respect when you drop from an allowance race or stakes company in for the $20,000 tag. Obviously, that is a tremendous class relief. And then I'll throw the three vivid exposure in there at a price as well, because I think this filly could maybe be the fastest of all early. I anticipate my horse getting a tracking trip behind the three vivid exposure. And she actually didn't run a bad race when she did go long. I know it was a, a while ago on the synthetic at Presque Isle. So those are my thoughts in the nightcap. Everything for me in this race goes through Lynetta. I'm singling really? her in the late pick four. That's the number seven horse for Tom Amos and Maggie Moss. She's got four races in her career and one good race. On the dirt. On the dirt. Mm -hmm. And she's back on dirt today. She's in for 20. I don't know. I mean, this is the spot in which she deserves to be. And she's installed at 6-1 to one on the morning line. She shows speed that day. Pace was fine, especially for the level. It says she was off slow. It didn't take her long to recover. She was on the inside that day, post one, going a mile and a 16th at the fairgrounds. And how long is that stretch at fairgrounds? I mean, it just goes on forever. It does. She gets the short stretch here today. It mm -hmm. may be even a better situation given this group of horses that she faces yeah, here mile at and a 16th. So Short stretch. So, Lynetta... I, I, I'm again. I'm singling her. I'm all in on her. The number ten horse, perfectly wicked for Brittany Russell. She was running well enough against allowance company, stakes company, but they drop her in for twenty. They're being aggressive. They're trying to win a race. They, they may lose her as well for twenty thousand dollars. She looks like she'd be worth the claim. And then the number six horse, Upswell for Paul McGee. Um, I, I don't have a problem with her if she can handle the off track here today. The daughter of Cairo Prince, but Lynetta for me in the nightcap. I don't say this often, but you make a good point. <laughs> you Can do. I get a copy of that? I, I, I get... think I'm going to add that horse to my late pick four. Yeah. Now, you, you make a very good point, and I think I'll be honest. I think I overlooked her a little bit. Okay. I just I want a tape of that. I want the audio <laughs> recording at the very least so I can just play it back. I just want access to that at all times. Race number two is our Keeneland Sales grad spotlight for the two-year-old maiden fillies. Four and a half furlongs is the distance. And her holy name, the number three horse, $50,000 Keeneland September yearling graduate from last year in 2023 for trainer John Hancock. Now, this is a filly that she has been privately sold since she's even run it within the last week because there is a new owner. John Stewart has purchased her for Resolute Racing with this daughter of Cantero. So make sure you make note of that. Mm -hmm. That's got, I that's mean, that's point. positive, right? I said it again. Wow, you're making a lot of good points today. Yeah, I think that's very positive. And that is, that's the goal of these horses, right? In these two-year-old races, to hope that they run well and then privately sell them. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, she could be a Royal Ascot type filly. And, and she's on the clocker report, too. She worked for John Hancock and company out finished West Memorial, who was beaten by a head in her career debut. That was a filly on Sunday, right? It was just beaten, West Memorial. Mm -hmm. And the Sires Offspring are runners at Kent Theros, they are. And she would be the type of filly, if she runs big here today, that could easily move over to the grass and, and head over to Royal Ascot. Because I was speaking to John Stewart um, not quite a week ago, but on Saturday, he's been outfitted for his, his uh, morning suit for Royal Ascot. And, and he's ready to go. So this could be part of the plan, her holy name, to get there. Very cool. That's a uh, great insight there. And, yeah, I mean, the sons and daughters of Cantheros, they're good early and they're good on anything. But Wesley's got one in there, too. He does. He's got the Chancelot, Philly Perfect Chances, who is uh, making her debut. First crop for Chancelot. I'm excited to see what he's his progeny is made of. I mean, he was very precocious. He was very fast. And his two-year-olds sold well. I mean, and I think that is always a good indicator of two-year-old readiness at this time of year um, at the Keeneland Spring Meet. So we'll see. Um, you know, I think... Wesley, we always say this, that he can't win every two-year-old race. Well, he has so far. <laughs> well, he's won two of the three. Two of the three, Two sorry. of the three, and by daylight. Yeah. I mean, the Philly on opening day was insanely good. And then yesterday, I mean, Johnny just From the just rail, too. There, right? I mean, he just sat there. <laughs> there was nobody close to him. So look forward to that second race. Obviously, more thoughts once we get to race number two, part of the early pick four, early pick five. Let's get into our uh, pick fours for the day. And... As I mentioned, Lynetta in the nightcap is my single in this sequence. 
and this one begins in race number six. I go in race number six, Rowtown, the number two, who we talked plenty about, and then the 13, Story Hour. Um, in race number seven, that's where I'm going for more coverage. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the eight has been scratched out of race number seven since I turned this in uh, my Romeo Lima, so it does come down a little bit as far as the... Um, the cost of it i would suggest in race number seven consider the one liam the brave given his pedigrees by liam's map and liam's map 21 percent winners on off track for his progeny um in race number eight the 11 and 12 and then the seven will close things out lanetta for me eight dollar ticket i had a nine dollar ticket yesterday how'd that do gabby it i could buy more well. umbrellas now <clears throat> you're very complimentary of yourself today well you were <laughs> i'm kidding Great job. It was like 60 I bucks can't for say nine bucks. I'm just, I'm just being, you know, hateful right now because I'm doing so horribly. But you are, you're killing it. You had a lot of nice winners on opening day. It's, it's continued into yesterday. You hit that for, I think it was 70 bucks for a $9 ticket, $7 ticket, something like that. So good job, Scott. My ticket's a little bit more expensive. 18 bucks. I'm going to use the two and the thir 13, excuse me. So uh, Spansive is the one filly that I left out. I just want horses that have proven themselves on the dirt. 13 hour obviously is entered for main track only. In the seventh race, I used my top three selections, the seven, the nine, and the 10. The preference is going to be the 10 Herald's Cloud for trainer Tom Amos. He might have himself a good day today. The eighth race, just the four and the seven, the four Uncle Jake is my top selection. I think it's going to be these two horses setting the pace. One will hopefully outlast the other, and then we get to the ninth and final race. I'll throw in your seven. Throw it in. I'll throw her in. Three, six, seven, ten. What's it, that cost? I'm not asking you. Get I'm, your app out. a rhetorical out. question. Get okay. your app out and figure it out. <laughs> We're going to... Those are our pick four thoughts of, for this afternoon. Let's go to our best segments, or best angles, I should say, this best angles segment. And uh, race number four, now scratch um, the three, four, and five. Jefferson Street is the even money morning line favorite. This horse may go off at three to five, two to five. Yeah, right. it's kind of like a pipeline situation from yesterday. Yeah, this is a colt for Godolphin and trainer Bill Mott and Junior Alvarado who's run twice, both of which were third. He was uh, third to BU, who we saw run in the Toyota Bluegrass uh, last Saturday for Mike Rapoli. And, and his, this is his most recent uh, race where he had the lead and he gets run down by BU in the Rapoli orange and blue silks. And, you know, he's staying on. He was just beat by a better horse this day. He's going six and a half furlongs. Either of his two races that he's run from Saratoga to Gulfstream are good enough. And I would expect that he takes a jump forward. Because he doesn't really need to in order no, to I don't win. Think, I don't think he needs to, but that his debut effort was a two-year-old debut. Then he was stashed away till the beginning of March. And now second off that layoff, I would expect him to be better today. Sometimes and they can bounce when that's the case. Look, I picked him because... Do you think he loses today? Let's be honest. Do you no, think is, I he's don't. the most likely winner of the day? I picked against him with the three. And then when the three scratched, I picked against him with the four. And then when the four scratched, I gave up. <laughs> So he's. I'm, you talk about playing daily doubles. I'm playing the double. He's he's the horse to single in this double, and then one five and seven in race number five, a twenty thousand dollar nominal two claimer, which gets way more difficult. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if the most likely winner of the day is Jefferson Street in race number four. I will definitely agree with that statement. Another good point. It's just. It's not. It's an obvious point. I mean. It, you, we, ha we had the half-brother to White Abario in there. He scratched. I'm just so disappointed with this race because I had, I had an angle here. That figure, that day, it's something to keep in mind. It was Fountain of Youth Day. I think all of those figures on the dirt were inflated. It was a really souped-up track that day. We've seen horses that exit the race and regress. We're talking 14, 10 points in their subsequent starts. But even if Jefferson Street regresses 10 points, he's still going to win this race is my point. Against this group. Yes. 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 So, okay. Anyway, let's let's carry on. Your best angle. Keep on carry on. Uh, well, I'm going to take you back to the sixth race. I had to change course a little bit. And the two row town is going to be my best angle here. Uh, this four-year-old filly for Brian Lynch. I know you like her. I like her. I think her dirt races are just fine. If you look at her second career performance, that was at Gulfstream Park when she uh, was forwardly placed in that sprint race. I guess the only concern would be her debut. That was her only start on a wet track. But I think she's a different horse 
now. Um, and she clearly showed that she could go two turns last time out. So I'm going to pick her on top. And um, my exacta is two overall. And that's nine bucks? <laughs> yeah. Six bucks? Six Excuse bucks. me. Six bucks. Oh, yes. Six <laughs> bucks. <laughs> okay. Your math was a bit off. Please don't ask me to do math. I'm still scrambling. My my brain is You're all over fine. the place today. Uh, but yes, I have to look at the paper. The two row town in the six. Let's go to Tom Leach. Long shot pick on the card today comes early in race three. We just missed yesterday with stately order. We'll try to get home today with stage right, the seven horse in race three. Dropping in class significantly. Didn't do much running the first time, but the class drop may be the key. Adding blinkers could be a key. And with the pedigree on this horse, I think he may actually prefer the main track. So let's try stage right to get right to the winner's circle in race three. Yeah, that I son like of it. hard spun. Pedigree's there, curling on the damn side. Drops him for 20. Um, he'll run better. There's no question about it. I, I would not have a problem whatsoever with going in that direction with stage right. I think if you're looking at that third race, sorry to cut you you're off, good. it's an all race for me in the early pick four. Anything could happen in that race. It is perplexing because the six blue vortex, I don't know, her, aren't her dirt races a little better than her turf races? She's going to take money. The 10, Trey Chic probably going to take money. I don't think her races are particularly fast. I think there could be bombs away in there. I went to the one Fada just based on the the distance, and he's by my boy Kerbon. You want oh, to yeah. go on the Kerbon? Kerbon, no, we don't have time for that. Thank goodness. Tangent. <laughs> Thank we goodness. Spent an, I spent about a half an hour betting here about Kerbon and how he should have won a grade one at Churchill. But we'll leave that conversation for another day, and we'll leave you with a great card ahead of us here this afternoon at Keeneland Racecourse. Off the turf, once again, sloppy main track conditions. Enjoy today at Keeneland. spring meet ends, summer success begins. Buy, sell, fresh winners, hot prospects. One night, one chance. Finish strong. Don't miss out. The Keeneland April Selected Horses of Racing Age Sale. Friday, April 26th. Did you know Toyota actually spends a million dollars every hour of every day on R&D? That's in addition to a $39 billion investment to design and build vehicles in the USA. Made in America means something to Toyota, like over 170,000 jobs and over 32 million Toyotas built right here in the USA. And for over 20 years, Toyota's electrified vehicles have led the way to a better tomorrow. The more you know, the more you'll drive Toyota. Let's go places. Keeneland, a horse will always be measured in hands. Hands that see, that sense, that speak. Hands that hold our sport to a higher standard. Not for our sake, but for theirs. For the love of the horse. For generations to come. Keeneland welcomes Ariana Witt to the paddock. Ariana is a Lexington native and neonatal ICU nurse at Kentucky Children's Hospital. A seasoned performer, she has proudly sung for esteemed audiences, including the U.S. men's rugby team and the Chicago Fire soccer team. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as you are able for our national anthem.
What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. still there Oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the Keeneland is proud to recognize Donna Woods from Retail as the Employee of the Day. Congratulations, Donna.
Good afternoon. Welcome to Keeneland Racecourse, where the main track is listed sloppy. We are off the turf today. So the entire card, all nine races to be contested on the main track. And again, currently listed sloppy. Time now for a look at all of the program changes beginning at the first race. Race one kicks off the first of the day's rolling doubles and pick threes and also starts the early pick five. In the opener, scratch the six, Q Bond. That's in the first race, scratch number six, Q Bond. Race two, start of the early pick four. Scratch the seven, Cruz Chica, and scratch the eight, Image of Me. That's in the second race, scratch the seven, Cruz Chica, and scratch the eight, Image of Me. Jockey change on the one, Baytown Storm. The jockey will be Joseph Belmer. Number one, Baytown Storm, make the jockey, Joe Belmer. There is a double bug allowance, so the corrected weight is 112. There's a double bug allowance, so the corrected weight, 112 pounds. The third race has no changes. Fourth race, that's where the pick six begins. No carryover for the pick six. In that fourth event, scratch number three, Midway Lights. Scratch the four, Cage Match. And scratch the five, Paved in Gold. That's in the fourth race. Scratch the three, Midway Lights. Scratch the four, cage match, and scratch the five, paved in gold. No superfecta on the fourth. No superfecta on the fourth race. Race five, that's the start of the late pick five. And in race five, there's an overweight, the seven striking sparks, the jockey one pound over. Seven striking sparks, the jockey one pound over. Sixth race, start of the late pick four. Race six, off the turf, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Race six, off the turf, it will go at a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Scratch the one, embrace me. Scratch the four, pleasant passage. Scratch five, quality star. Also scratch seven, make the boys wink. Scratch the eight, swoop to finish. Also scratch the 11, Papilio, and scratch 12, Secret Statement. Again, that's in race six. Scratch the one, Embrace Me. Scratch the four, Pleasant Passage. Scratch the five, Quality Star. Scratch the seven, Make the Boys Wink. Scratch the eight, Swoop to Finish. Scratch 11, Papilio. Scratch the 12, Secret Statement. Please note, number 13, Story Hour, draws into the race. 13, Story Hour, will run, and the jockey will be Tyler Gaffalione, as shown in the program. But that means there's a jockey change on the 10. So please note, number 10, strikingly spun, the jockey, Joel Rosario. Number 10, strikingly spun, that's where we find the jockey change, and it'll be Joel Rosario. Seventh race. Scratch number three, Cook Creek. And scratch the eight, My Romeo Lima. That's in the seventh race. Scratch number three, Cook Creek. And scratch the eight, My Romeo Lima. Eighth race. Race eight comes off the turf. It'll go a mile and an eighth on the main track. Race eight off the turf, mile and an eighth on the main track. In race eight, scratch the one, ready to perform. Scratch the two, Bay Street Money. Scratch five, the Gray Wizard. Also scratch number eight, Underdressed. Scratch number nine, Chasing the Crown. Scratch the ten, Fort Washington. Also scratch 13, Giant Game. And scratch 14, Hay Strike. That's in the eighth race. Off the turf, mile and an eighth main track. Scratch the one ready to perform. Scratch the two, Bay Street Money. Scratch five, the Gray Wizard. Also scratch eight, Underdressed. Nine, Chasing the Crown. Ten, Fort Washington. And scratch both the 13, Giant Game and the 14, Hayes Strike. There's also an overweight in that eighth race. The seven, Gunton Row, the jockey, one pound over. Seven Gunton Row, the jockey, one 
pound over. Ninth and final race, a carryover of just over $7,400 for the Toyota Super High Five. $7,472 to carry over. In that ninth event, scratch the one, Dreaming Always. And scratch the five, Marco Sunset. That's in the ninth race, scratch the one, Dreaming Always. And scratch the five, Marco Sunset. Also, there's a jockey change in that ninth event. The jockey for the two, Laser Jet, Axel Concepcion. Number two, Laser Jet, make the jockey, Axel Concepcion. Those are the current program changes. Time now to check in with Scott Hazelton and Gabby Gaudette. Very happy Thursday to you, Kurt Becker. And for those of you joining us here at Keeneland Racecourse on course and from around the world, as we look forward to another rainy day here in Lexington, Kentucky, this was expected coming into the day and no turf racing once again, but still some quality racing and some challenges ahead mm -hmm. as we've had to adjust our handicapping to figure out who's going to be suited for this off track here this afternoon. Yeah, lots of rain between yesterday and today. So don't always or don't only keep that in mind when you're handicapping those off the turf races, just the dirt races in general, the races that were originally carded for the dirt too. You really want to consider those uh, sloppy track pedigrees, maybe uh, look at uh, past performances of these horses that have handled a wet track before, because that is what we're going to be dealing with throughout the day. Race number eight is our feature. It's a mile and an eighth on the main track now with it coming off the turf course there are a few scratches in here and a horse like santorini i think does move up based on this race coming off the turf course so just another situation where you've got to look elsewhere to where you maybe originally were looking towards in a race like this especially at this mile and an eighth distance i kind of like the four uncle jake in there just because of his speed and he's proven that he can handle a distance of ground he won on the synthetic last time out at turfway we've seen turfway form hold well so with those scratches i think that horse has some legitimate dirt races we have a toyota super high five carryover for race number nine the nightcap it's seven thousand four hundred and seventy two dollars so make sure you get involved in the toyota super high five as we look forward to kicking off this race card at the top of the hour here at Keeneland. We're now 17 minutes away from the top of the hour and race number one. This is a starter $30,000 allowance race at a mile and a 16th. Phillies and mares three and up, which have started for that $30,000 tag or less and which have never, never won three races. There are basically co-favorites right now. I know the eight has the slight edge from the wind pool perspective, slight more money going towards the eight, but the three is not far off. That is Little Dixie for trainer Mike Revis, a... Chicago stalwart for a number of decades and this is a filly by Union Rags who's been working up at Hawthorne Racecourse in the suburbs of Chicago to come down here and run at Keeneland Racecourse. I'm always drawn to these types of horses. I obviously have a Chicago background growing up in the racing there but also when you look at horses that are at various places and that's one of the brilliant things about Keeneland it brings so many different horses from different places together and adds to the challenge but when you've got connections that are willing to invest the time the money the effort in bringing horses down here to keeneland to compete at a higher level it has to be viewed as a positive positive. and little dixie has dirt form that is good good enough here certainly last time out on the synthetic didn't quite get the position that she probably wanted to have being so far out of it but she gets tyler gaffleone aboard today I'll roll with Mike Revis and his decision to bring her down here to Keeneland to race outside of staying back in Chicago and looking for easier competition. Little Dixie, the three at five to two, my top selection. The number four horse, Divinely Bolt for Mark Sims Jr. So horse, it wasn't quite settled going into the gate. Had some issues. I think that cost this filly in that last race. It cost her position in that start at Turfway Park. She's getting off the synthetic, obviously, as a few of them are coming into this race off of Turfway Park synthetic races, but the drop in class, in my opinion, based on what she's seen in previous dirt races. I know she ran for 30 and she ran for 50 in her last two, and that's how she's eligible for this race. But you look at her dirt races in the summer months and spring months of last year at between Oakland Park and Churchill Downs, so much more difficult as far as the competition. Easier spot today. Jose Ortiz in the saddle, who's having a phenomenal meet here at Keeneland Racecourse, 
in the five days of racing, four days of racing that we've had thus far, Divinely Bolt to me will run better than what she has in her previous dirt races, and that's the idea behind Divinely Bolt for me, the number four horse in the opener. And then the eight horse, that's Gabby's top selection. It's my third choice, take shape. The five to two, a uh, lukewarm favorite right now. Winner last time out, coming off the synthetic of Turfway Park. She'll run better, same idea, than what we've seen from her at Churchill Downs and Ellis Park on the dirt, given the level of competition that she faced in those races. Her last dirt race at Churchill Downs during the late November portion of that November meet meeting over in Louisville, Kentucky, she chased a filly named Red River Magic at Chris Hartman Philly, who was, is very, very fast and a very, very fast one-turn filly. So for her to finish third that day at Churchill Downs, come out of there, win. She's won two of her three starts since. She obviously gets eligible for this starter condition based on her last two starts for 30. It's the right spot for her to be in. We'll see what Irad Ortiz Jr. has in store for this outside draw that she has going the mile and a 16th and trying to get over and get position. And will he try to make the lead? We will find out um, when they leave the starting gate. But top to bottom, a very competitive field. The tote board tells you that. The early pick five begins here in race number one, and the pool already up to $145,000. And don't forget about the daily doubles and that reduced takeout introduced this new meet from 22% down to 15% just simply means more money being paid out in those daily doubles. Good luck in the opener here at Keeneland.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's first race. Starter allowance fillies and mares age three and up. It'll be a mile and a 16th over the main track listed sloppy. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch the six Q bond. Number six is scratch. Double and pick three wagering start of the early pick five. We are off the turf today at Keeneland. All nine races on the main track, which is listed sloppy to start the card. Post time at seven minutes. Seven minutes to post race number one. Jackie's love for James Butcher is the number one horse we're taking a look at. Now, this is a mare by Jack Milton who has form here at Keeneland. She sprung a big upset back in the fall meet of last year where she showed a good positional speed out of the gate going seven and a half, or seven furlongs, excuse me, and was able to win by a neck at 23 to one. Andre, Andres Calleja, who sprung that big upset on Sunday in the two-year-old race early on in the card he's ridden this mare before and ridden her in a route race so uh, there is a case to be made for this mare getting back on dirt and back here to keeneland at odds of eight to one chiquita mosca the number two horse she's also at eight to one she'll take a big drop down in class and talk about a change in distance from a mile and a quarter to a mile and a 16th so a completely different scenario for her she has obviously got course form as well. She's won here in the past. She's been way in over her head in her recent races. And the one issue that I would have with this two horse is that she's probably going to be too far off the pace on this off track. But the class drop is huge for this filly based on her dirt races alone. And she's eight to one right now on the board being a one time winner. And she's not a bad looking filly, big stout filly by Commissioner at odds of eight to one. Good race coming up, two to one now on the eight horse, getting a little separation in the wagering take shape for Joe Sharp, who I overheard really likes all of his runners here today at Keeneland Racecourse. So take a second look, third look, if you haven't already at the Joe Sharp runners today at Keeneland beyond take shape. Five minutes before race number one to start the early pick five, the pool now over $202,000.
Your attention, please. A late scratch in Keeneland's first race. Scratch number two, Chiquita Mosca. First race, scratch number two, Chiquita Mosca. Scratched on the advice of the veterinarian. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's first race, start of the early pick five. Moving into line for the first race. Here's Divinely Bolt coming forward. It wasn't me moving into line. 
Last two getting ready to load. Here's Shear. Take shape, the last one. Goes in. First wire at the post. And they're off. There's Jackie's love for the early lead. It wasn't me is right there. And take shape up on the outside. Take shape moves forward now to challenge Jackie's love for the top spot. It wasn't me. Settles back and gets over to the rail in third position. Shear is fourth up on the outside. Little Dixie is fifth against the rail. And Divinely Bolt is alongside that one last. But right there with the rest for the move around the first turn. Jackie's love against the rail leads it by three quarters of a length. Take shape second up on the outside. 23.74 seconds was the time for the opening quarter. It wasn't me. It's third back toward the inside, a half length. Now here's Divinely Bolt, moves up, takes third, and shifts lanes further toward the outside, just a length off the front pair. Further back, Shear is next to last at the midpoint of the back stretch, and Little Dixie, who is last and running about five lengths from the front as they make the move over for the far turn, back up front side by side for the lead. Take shape to the outside, and Jackie's love to the inside. It was 48.17 seconds, the time for the first half mile. So so Take Shape has the lead and leads it now by a half length. Divinely Bolt moves up on the outside into the second position. Jackie's Love is in third. It wasn't me. Tries to get engaged here, but still fourth on the outside. Three lengths from the front, followed by Little Dixie and Sheer, the distant trailer. They round the far turn. Take Shape is the leader. Divinely Bolt a length and a half away in the second position. Just under a quarter mile to go. They move to the top of the short stretch. Jackie's Love in third. Little Dixie wide toward fourth. It wasn't me is now fifth. Turning for home. Take Shape is the leader. It has the lead now out to a four-length margin. Take shape, divinely bolt, Little Dixie third up on the outside. And then Jackie's Love is fourth. It wasn't me is in fifth. Final furlong. Take shape is in front by three and a half lengths. Battle is on for second. They come to the wire. Take shape. Wins the opener for Irad Ortiz Jr. Head Bob's going to decide that runner-up spot. It'll either be Little Dixie or divinely bolt for second. And then further back behind that pair, Jackie's Love finished fourth. Bet down to nine to five, takes shape, takes to the off track and wins this one very comfortably in the end. And Joe Sharp could be the start of a very productive day for his stable, his barn, as he gets this one under or with Irad Ortiz Jr. As Kurt mentioned, very tight on the wire. The three was trying to get up in front of the four, but that is really close to call when it comes to the first wire finish for that second money. But takes shape, no doubt about it, in the opener. The unofficial results of Keeneland's first race. Number eight, Take Shape, was first. Number three, Little Dixie, second. Number four, Divinely Bolt, third. And number one, Jackie's Love, fourth. Eight, three, four, one, unofficial.
Results of Keeneland's first race official, 8341, the official results. Official winner of Keeneland's first, number eight, Take Shape. Owned by Dugan McNichol Racing, LLC, a Brian J. Dugan trained by Joe Sharp. Irad Ortiz, Jr., the jockey. Take Shape, a four-year-old filly by Street Sense, out of Loom by Hard Spun, bred in Kentucky by G. Watts Humphrey, Jr., Susan Keller, Victoria Oliver, G. Watts Humphrey, the third. Mile of the 16th over the main track, sloppy, one minute, 46.61 seconds. Keeneland's second race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, start of the early pick four. Scratch the seven, Cruz Chica, and scratch the eight, Image of Me. Again, scratch seven, Cruz Chica, and eight, Image of Me. Reminder, the jockey for the one, Baytown Storm, will be Joseph Belmer. Joe Belmer rides the one, Baytown Storm. There is a double bug apprentice allowance, so the corrected weight, 112 pounds. Corrected weight, 112. Off the turf today, all nine races on the main track at Keeneland, track sloppy.
two-year-olds back in action here on this wet Thursday afternoon. These are two-year-old fillies going four and a half furlongs, and it's being billed as a two-horse race. There's a look at her holy name, a daughter of Cantheros that was sold at the Keeneland September sale last September for $50,000 to the previous connections. And I say previous because since entries were taken, John Stewart and Resolute Racing have purchased this filly privately, and that certainly has to be viewed as a very positive sign. It stays under the care of John Hancock, one of the best when it comes to the two-year-olds here in the springtime at Keeneland Racecourse. Look, I've heard about this filly uh, from John and how good she's doing. She's a well-bred filly by Cantheros. It's a good chunk of money for these connections to have bought her for $50,000 back in September as a yearling, and we'll see how she fares. She's 8-5. to five. She's live on the tote board right now, faced up against the Wesley Ward runner, which we'll get to in a moment, but her holy name for now, Resolute Racing and John Stewart. We'll see if she can bring it here on debut. I think you've got to expect that she will uh, on her two-year-old career debut. The number nine horse for Wesley Ward, perfect chance, uh, chances, excuse me. This is a filly from the first crop of that speedster chance a lot this is a two-year-old filly that comes from a byron first dam bred by crawford farms this is the first runner for the mother of this filly american baby but chance a lot was so fast his win up at saratoga in the amsterdam was one of the most impressive sprint races in recent memory especially uh, for that group of three-year-olds that he was competing against and we've seen the chance a lot two-year-olds at the two-year-old sale in florida just last month bring quite a bit of money so under the care of wesley ward obviously you always start in the direction of wesley ward in the two-year-old races wesley's won two two-year-old races so far of the three uh, baby races that we've had here at keeneland so far this meet during the spring so expectations are always going to be high with wesley ward two-year-olds at keeneland as is the case with perfect chances and then another first crop stallion represented with baytown amy rose this is a daughter of the champion game winner breeders cup winner during his two-year-old season he's a son of candy ride just a three thousand dollar keeneland september yearling from 2023 but you've got that candy ride influence that i've hammered on over the last two days with the wet conditions that we have paul mcintee good with young horses quick enough workouts here for the debut at 13 to 1 that's the price you're getting on baytown amy rose but again it's being billed as a two horse race being played as a two horse race right now and i do not expect that to change in the wagering between the nine and the number three horse race number two will begin the early pick four 50 cent minimum wager and those daily doubles will continue to roll throughout the card up until race number eight which will begin the late daily double with that reduced takeout on all double wagers down to 15 percent two-year-olds will be competing on the sloppy main track in less than 13 minutes here at keeneland
There will be a slight delay before the field for race two comes onto the racetrack equipment repair currently in the paddock.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's second race, the Maple Hill. Maiden special weight two-year-old Phillies Heedley course, four and a half furlongs. The track is sloppy. Double pick three and start of the early pick four. Scratch the seven, Cruz Chica, and scratch the eight, Image of Me. Again, scratch the seven, Cruz Chica, and scratch the eight, Image of Me. A reminder, the jockey for the one, Baytown Storm, Joseph Belmer. Joe Belmer rides number one, Baytown Storm, there is a double bug apprentice allowance, so that means the weight is 112, 112 pounds carried by the one Baytown Storm. Off the turf today, all nine races on the main track. Sloppy, post time in about three minutes for race two. Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's second race, the Maple Hill, start of the early pick four. Moving into line, race two. Her holy name goes into the gate. Baytown Amy Rose comes forward. Rio de Paz moves in. Misty Sunday, perfect chances, the last to load. Goes in, they're at the post.
and they're off. Perfect chances quick into stride. Perfect chances comes out running for the early lead, and Baytown Storm is there to the inside. Citizen Judy away running in third, then Rio de Paz is fourth. Misty Sunday is in the fifth position, and Baytown Amy Rose is last of the six as they round the far turn. Perfect chances in front gets over to the rail around that far turn. Leads at a length and a half. Citizen Judy goes second up on the outside. Baytown Storm is back toward the inside in third. Rio de Paz looks toward the far outside. Still seven from the front they turn for home and perfect chances is the leader perfect chances on top by two lengths chased all the way by citizen judy moving into the final furlong her holy name is now up to third but is still six lengths behind the leader and the leader's coming to the 16th pole perfect chances in front for walter rodriguez perfect chances winning here at keeneland citizen judy was across the line in second then her holy name was third and baytown storm was fourth Another two-year-old winner for Wesley Ward here at Keeneland. This spring meet, that gives him three in less than a week's time. And perfect chances, just like they normally do, break sharp and keep on going. And this is an important win for this stallion, Chancelot. His first winner from his first starter. And it comes right here at Keeneland in open-length fashion. And she went off at odds of one to two. Nine, two, three, one, unofficial in the second. The unofficial results of Keeneland's second race, number nine, Perfect Chances, was first. Number two, Citizen Judy, was second. Number three, her holy name, was third. Number one, Baytown Storm, finished fourth. Nine, two, three, one, unofficial. Results of Keeneland's second race official. 9231, the official results.
In the winner's circle for Keeneland's second race, the official winner of the Maple Hill, number nine, Perfect Chances. Owned by Crawford Farms Racing of Michelle and Al Crawford, trained by Wesley Ward, Walter Rodriguez, the winning jockey. Perfect Chances, a two-year-old filly by Chancelot, out of American Baby by Byron, bred in Kentucky by Crawford Farms. Heedley course, four and a half furlongs over the sloppy track, 52.86 seconds. The Maple Hill Trophy presentation to the connections of perfect chances. Keeneland's third race upcoming, double and pick three wagering. Track is listed sloppy. All nine races contested today on the main track. We are off the turf. Track is sloppy. No scratches, no jockey changes in this third event.
Heavy rain continues here at Keeneland Racecourse. As we saw in race number two, it's really picked up here in the last 30 minutes. And Feta, the number one horse, is who you're looking at moseying around in the rain in the paddock. This is a filly by Kerbon, who was a sensational route horse on the turf course. The son of Spitestown was campaigned by Shadwell. This is Shadwell homebred. And this filly comes from a See the Stars first dam, one of the uh, best uh, arc winners that we've seen in modern history and certainly one of the better stallions that uh, we have overseas. Now, the idea here with this filly is just getting out to the route of ground and the drop in class that she is taking. Uh, she was not involved at all in that six furlong sprint. She gets nine furlongs to work with here today, and I'm hopeful that that will unlock something for Feta for Shadwell Stables at odds of 11 to 1. The number six horse, Blue Vortex for Joe Sharp. Uh, mentioned that Joe felt he was coming in with a strong hand today. Didn't disappoint with his first runner of the day in race number one. Here's the second one, a filly by Air Force Blue, who's run some even races at shorter distances. And she's going to go out to a mile and an eighth, and we'll see if that uh, adds to her opportunity to have a better finish. She is currently sitting at 5-2 to two for Jer Barry and Joni Butzo and Tyler Gaffleone in the saddle. A filly that makes a whole lot of sense in and amongst this group at this level and especially at this distance. And then the number two horse that is silent secretary for Magdalena Racing and Kenny McPeak, Brian Hernandez Jr. in the saddle. Uh, she's going to go the furthest that she ever has. Sort of the same idea here with the even runs that she's had at shorter distances and getting more ground to work with. Uh, she's got some uh, very nice stamina pedigree on the dam side for what it's worth, a Brazilian bred filly here today. And then uh, speaking of that, it seems like so often we've seen in the last several decades, really since Southern America, South American horses have been imported more frequently up here to America, how well the South, Southern Hemisphere uh, pedigrees work on the off track. And we'll see if it works with Silent Secretary as she sits at five to one right now on the tote board. She's one of two horses that's actually entered in that Keeneland April sale, the Horses of Racing Aid sale, which will take place after closing day, immediately after closing day on that same evening uh, here at Keeneland Racecourse. She herself, Silent Secretary, entered in that sale, as is Trace Sheik, the number 10 horse, the other Kenny McPeak runner in here, another filly with South American pedigree. She's an Argentinian bred. 15 minutes away from race number three, there's a look at Tress Sheik at odds of 9 to 2. 15 minutes out from the third race, a mile and an eighth the distance for these runners as the rain continues to fall out here at Keeneland.
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's third race, maiden claiming event fillies and mares age three and up for a price of $20,000, a mile and an eighth over the sloppy main track. Double and pick three wagering featured here. No changes in the third race. Again, all nine races today at Keeneland to be contested on the main track. Track edition sloppy, post time in five minutes. There's a look at the seven horse stage right, eight to one right now in the G. Watts Humphrey Jr. Green and White Diamond Silks for Vicki Oliver, a G. Watts Humphrey Jr. homebred. This is Tom Leach's long shot pick of the day, nine to one. Square price on this filly. Gets a lot of class relief, gets over to the main track in just start two of his her career after debuting on the turf course at Tampa Bay Downs at a big number. Blinkers being added. The off track should work with this pedigree being a daughter of hard spun. Strong numbers there when it comes to progeny and running on and off track. So stage right wouldn't talk you off this Philly if you're willing to take that 8-1 to one gamble along with Tom Leach, his long shot pick of the day. The 10's price, Trace Sheik, that price down to 7-2 to two right now. Uh, daughter of C. Henge, that's a scat daddy stallion, Southern Halo first dam, mentioned Argentinian bred Philly. This will be just her second try on a dirt main track that first coming back in January, beginning of January, and that was a third place finish. She finished second for 15,000, most recently at uh, Turfway Park. We'll see how far back she comes in this race. That's been one of the things for this filly is that she is not able to keep up with them early on and then she makes a run late, but at odds of seven to two, will she be able to do that on this off track here this afternoon? But as I said before, as these fillies were in the paddock, it just seems for whatever reason, these Southern, Amer Southern American pedigrees, South American pedigrees, Southern Hemisphere pedigrees just seem to work well on these off tracks. And this filly has that on her side. Less than two minutes before race number three here at Keeneland Racecourse. This one starts another double, another pick three, both sitting at uh, that $1 minimum for the double, 50 cent minimum for the pick three as they'll continue to roll throughout the afternoon. Good luck. Race three next.
horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's third race. Moving into line, race three. Blue Vortex comes forward. Stage right. Inspector Penny. Luminous Ruler goes in. Here is Snap Judgment. Last one to load will be Trace Sheik coming forward now. Goes in, they're at the post. And they're off. There goes Inspector Penny out for the early lead. Inspector Penny right to the front. Feta is there toward the inside. And Silent Secretary comes away in third as the field heads to the first turn. Blue Vortex moves up with stage right. Snap Judgment out in the center of the track moves forward as well around the turn. Inspector Penny to the inside of Blue Vortex. That's the battle for the lead. They're separated by a half length. And then three wide goes stage right. A close up third around the first turn. Here's Silent Secretary threading the needle through some traffic to the inside and now between horses into the fourth position as they head on to the back stretch. Snap Judgment is there up toward the outside and then Malin who moves from between horses from the sixth spot. Now Feta broke alertly but has dropped back toward the back of the pack now is down toward the rail and running some seven lengths off the lead. Trey Sheik is at the back of the pack as they head for the turn as Patore Doro has moved up a couple of positions into seventh. It was 23.99 for the quarter, 48.51 for the first half mile. Over to the far turn they go. Inspector Penny against the rail, Blue Vortex on the outside and they are separated by just a neck. Three more lengths back to Malin who is in third position by a length and a half. Patore Doro moves to the outside in fourth. Silent Secretary is between horses, carefully moving up in fifth, still seven lengths off the lead. Trace Sheik has to go to the far outside, also with seven to make up as the field rounds the far turn, comes toward the quarter pole. Inspector Penny, Blue Vortex, Patore Doro, Trace Sheik up on the far outside, and Silent Secretary fifth, who's looking for an opening down toward the inside. Inspector Penny with Trace Sheik right alongside now, and Patore Doro is in between that pair, and Silent Secretary is still toward the rail but still fourth. Trey Sheik down the outside. Puts ahead in front. Patore Doro is there to the inside and still fighting on and is still very much in the hunt as they come past the 16th pole. Trey Sheik outside of Patore Doro. Trey Sheik has a neck in front. Patore Doro is still there fighting on. Trace Sheik gets up by a neck over Patore Doro who was across the line in second and silent secretary got third.
The Argentinian filly in the slop, Trace Sheik. She had to come from off the pace. She swings wide, but she had momentum and had something left in the tank as she's going to lay down and battle with the number three horse, Vittore Dora. It's Albin Jimenez on the far side. On the near side, that is Julian Le Peru. And Trace Sheik, the Sea Henge filly, he'll be offered at the Keeneland April sale, gets the victory. Kenny McPeak goes first and third here in the trifecta. 10 3 2 unofficially in race number three at Keeneland. Unofficial results of Keeneland's third race. Number 10, Trace Sheik was first. Number three, Pittore Doro second. Number two, Silent Secretary third. Number eight, Luminous Ruler fourth. 10 3 2 8, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's third race, number 10, Trace Sheik, owned by Magdalena Racing of Sherry McPeak, owned also by Tommy Lewis and James Ball, the trainer Kenny McPeak, the jockey Julian Le Peru. Trace Sheik, four-year-old daughter C. Hinge out of Takanuya by Southern Halo, bred in Argentina by Vacacion. Mild and an eighth over the sloppy main track, one minute 58.67 seconds. Third race results official. 10 3 2 8, the official results. Keeneland's fourth race upcoming. Double and pick three wagering. Also, start of the pick six. No carryover today. We are off the turf. All races today on the main track, which is listed sloppy. In this fourth race, scratch number three, Midway Lights. Scratch the four, Cage Match. And scratch the five, Paved in Gold. Again, scratch three, Midway Lights, four, Cage Match, and five, Paved in Gold. No Superfecta 
on this fourth event. Since this does start the pick six, looking ahead on today's card, a reminder, race six is off the turf and goes a mile and a 16th main track. Race six off the turf. It will go a mile and a 16th on the main track. Race eight is off the turf and it will go a mile and an eighth main track. That's race eight off the turf, a mile and an eighth on the main track, which is listed sloppy.
18 minutes to post before race number four. The rain letting up just a bit from the heavier bit of rain that we had over the last uh, couple of races here at Keeneland Racecourse. And even looking to the south, there are some blue skies out in the distance. So we might get a break in the rain in the not too distant future here midway through this race card. Jefferson Street is one to nine on the board right now. That's the number eight horse. Both Gabby and I going in the direction of this colt and his path to victory got a heck of a lot easier when both the three and the full horse scratched out of this race. Gabby and I both agreed on today at Keeneland that this was arguably the most likely winner of the card. The tote board tells you that his both of his races with one at two year old debut at Saratoga in September and then the follow up race some months later, uh, just a few weeks back at Gulfstream Park. Both of those races, even though they were third place finishes, should be enough to beat this group here today. I feel like he'll get better off of that race, which we saw from him at Gulfstream Park, where he was beaten by a horse named B.U., who competed in the grade one Toyota Bluegrass this past Saturday here at Keeneland Racecourse. The bottom line is either of those two efforts and a bit of improvement or even just staying steady to what we've seen from him. Now we've got a little bit of sun uh, coming through here in the paddock, which is a welcome uh, scene here at Keeneland Racecourse. But either of those two races will be good enough to beat this group. You're going to have to accept this extremely short price, whether it's one to nine or two to five or three to five or whatever it is. But he is by far and away the horse to beat in this race for Godolphin, trainer Bill Mott and Junior Alvarado. The alternative, the number one horse, Rock and Roll Bolt, for me, for Jose Camejo. Uh, he was second going a mile on a 16th last time out. Um, he showed speed that day at the route distance. He lay, has laid off the pace in his sprint races, and I would imagine that'll be the approach here today uh, from the inside draw. I can't imagine he'll show that much more quickness to be able to set the pace, but he's a contender underneath. He's a son of Bolt Doro, who's 0 for 7 in his career, and he's coming into this race with some of the best racing we've seen from him in his career. He's only a 3-year-old, um, and he's getting better, but is that better going to be good enough to go with Jefferson Street? Doesn't seem likely, but at 5-1, to one, an underneath horse at the very least to consider in race number 4. 17-1 to one on accident, the number 7 horse. That's my third selection. Um, he go, gets back on dirt. He's held steady as far as his form. His sprint races, he's coming from off the pace as well. He might be able to pick up a piece of it uh, to, to finish in the top three. But at 17 to 1, it just goes to show you what these other horses are up against and facing off against Jefferson Street, who continues to be this heavy favorite and will continue to be the heavy favorite that he is as we look into accident getting his saddle put on him. And you can see the sun hitting the trees down here at Keeneland Race Course. Race number four will get underway in less than 15 minutes. This race will start the pick six on the afternoon, a $1 minimum pick six with the heavy favorite Jefferson Street being the headliner as we all expected. Good luck in the fourth at Keeneland.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fourth race, the Woodstock. Maiden special weight, three-year-olds and up, six and a half furlongs over the sloppy main track. Double and pick three wagering and start of the all main track pick six. No carryover. Scratch number three, Midway Lights. Scratch the four, Cage Match. And scratch the five, Paved in Gold. No Superfecta on this fourth event. No Superfecta on race four. And again, we are off the turf. All races today at Keeneland on the main track, which is listed sloppy. Post time in seven minutes.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fourth race, the Woodstock, start of the all-main track pick six. Moving into line, race four. Three left to load. Here's Tonka Trouble. Accident moves into line. Jefferson Street, the last to load. Goes in. They're at the post. And they're off. There's Jefferson Street, right for the lead from the outside, but has company. Rock and Roll Bolt will move up quickly from the inside to press the issue. Rock and Roll Bolt moves up the rail, has the lead now by three quarters of a length. Jefferson Street will go second, then a gap of just over three more lengths to Accident, who's third a half length outside of Guilty Affair and a margin of seven more lengths back of that pair to Tonka Trouble, who is last as they make the move off the end of the back stretch. Rock and Roll Bolt, the lead by a length and a half now after an opening quarter on the board in 21.98 seconds as Jefferson Street backs away into the second position by just over two lengths. Accident third, then a gap of seven more around the turn back to Guilty Affair and Tonka Trouble, who is last. Coming off the final turn, once again, Jefferson Street is on the move, regains the lead and opens up here. Jefferson Street in the blink of an eye on top by two, by three lengths off the turn from Rock and Roll Bolt in second. And then Accident, who is third up on the outside and challenging for the second spot. But Jefferson Street is kicking on into the final furlong with a widening seven-length, eight-length lead now. The battle continues for second. You've got Rock and Roll Bolt to the inside, an accident there on the outside. But past the 16th pole, no catching. Jefferson Street, Junior Alvarado aboard. Jefferson Street, much the best. Accident was second. Rock and Roll Bolt was third. Guilty Affair fourth. And Tonka Trouble was fifth. Very little drama here in race number four at Keeneland. Jefferson Street doing exactly what everyone expected he would do in this race. He'll draw off and win at odds of one to five. The one rock and roll bolt tried to set the pace. He did. He went quick. That catches up with him late. Junior Alvarado never panicked. When he pushed the button, he got the response from Jefferson Street. An open length victory over the seven who rallies for second accident. And then that pace setter, Rock and Roll Bolt, will check in for a third. An easy win for Bill Mott and Godolphin with this Colt by Street Sense, Jefferson Street.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fourth race, number eight, Jefferson Street first. Number seven, Accident was second. Number one, Rock and Roll Bolt was third. Number two, Guilty Affair fourth. 8712, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's fourth race, the Woodstock, number eight, Jefferson Street, owned by Godolphin LLC of Mohammed Al Maktoum and others, trained by Bill Mott, the jockey Junior Alvarado. Jefferson Street, a three year old son of Street Sense out of APRA by Bernardini, bred in Kentucky by Godolphin. Six and a half furlongs over the sloppy main track, one minute 16.65 seconds, and the results official. 8712, the official results for Keeneland's fourth race. In the winter circle, the Woodstock trophy presentation to the connections of Jefferson Street. Keeneland's fifth race upcoming, double and pick three wagering, start of the all main track, late pick five. The track is listed sloppy. Race five, a mile of the 16th. This race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. No scratches, no jockey changes in race five. Overweight, the seven striking sparks, the jockey one pound over. Seven striking sparks, the jockey one pound over.
Race five coming up next that caps off the early pick five and starts a new one, the late pick five as well. A mile and a 16th out on the main sloppy sealed track, $20,000 claiming event for horses who have never won two races lifetime. I start the conversation off with the number five right off Jerry. This will be the top selection for me. Uh, you know, I think it also depends on what kind of price you get. Right now, he's at 9-2. to two. I think that's a, a fair price on this runner, primarily because he's never tried the dirt before. He's never tried a fast main track, and he's never tried a wet main track either. He's only tried the turf and the synthetic surfaces. But he has been in very good form as of late. I actually thought his last race against Starter Allowance Company uh, was excellent. And even if you look back at some of the races he competed in uh, over the course of the winter at Turfway Park, they were good. They were higher level claiming races and those types of races have come up to be quite strong um, over the course of the winter just the the presence of a lot of Kentucky horsemen not really leaving the state of Kentucky and opting to keep those horses at Turfway those races those claiming races came up really tough so I like the races at the five right off Jerry comes out of he's going to be the top selection for me this is a very tough race uh, the 10 Americus is another one I used he's nine to two right now for trainer Brad Cox I'll admit I threw him in here because it's Brad Cox at Keeneland and he's a horse that's been in very good form, but he is a three-year-old going against older company. And this time of year, that can be a little bit difficult. His last race though, he looked like he was coming on late. He was the beaten favorite that day, but I do think this is a horse that uh, will benefit from stretching back out in distance. That last race was six furlongs. He simply seemed like he ran out of real estate and he did break his maiden going two turns or going the mile at Horseshoe Indianapolis where he went gate to wire so I think if he can get back to those races he should be competitive against this group and then finally the one dual monarchy is another one that I wanted to use he doesn't have a lot of early speed but I think the added distance from the mile to the mile and the 16th should help him in the real post position. I have been impressed with uh, some of the rides that Edgar Morales has been putting on. He's been aggressive. He's been, he's been putting his horses in the right types of places. And I think with this real post position, this horse shouldn't be too far off of it. He seems like kind of a one-paced horse, so I hope that's the trip he gets. If he has to do a lot of running in the late stages of the race, I don't think uh, it'll benefit him much. But this is the type of race I thought even earlier, race three and this race, race three and five, were two of the most complicated races on the card just because you get horses coming from all different types of circuits throughout the country and sometimes that makes a very challenging handicapping puzzle especially when you're talking about a claiming race so we'll see what happens right now competitive wagering board as well as we have co-favorites at four to one the three and the ten right now on the board as we are 16 minutes out from race five to kick off that late pick five good luck
The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's fifth race, claiming race for a price of $20,000. Three-year-olds end up a mile and a sixteenth over the sloppy main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Double and pick three wagering is start of the all-main track, late pick five. Overweight, the seven striking sparks, the jockey one pound over. Seven striking sparks, the jockey one pound over. Post time coming up in just six minutes. Off the turf today, all races at Keeneland on the main track this afternoon. Start of the late pick five.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's fifth race, start of the all-main track, late pick five. Moving into line, race five. Luke moves into line along with Haskold. Here's Fan the Fire. Liam's Lad going in. Right off Jerry. Americus, the last one, goes in. All in line. First wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Fan the Fire. Fan the Fire out for the lead with Laka right there and Dual Monarchy down toward the inside, followed by Luke and then Striking Sparks, who's up on the outside. Fan the Fire moving forward, has the lead at least for a moment, but into the turn, Wallaka hugs the rail and moves up and takes the lead. Wallaka leads it by a half length. Fan the Fire goes second. Luke between horses is third. Striking Sparks, three lanes off the rail in the fourth position. Dual Monarchy. Hugging the rail from that inside starting spot, saves some ground, moves up two spots from fifth into third onto the back stretch, and then Haskell is out toward the center of the track in sixth. Right it on the ice is in seventh, America's eighth between horses. Right off Jerry is in the ninth position, placed toward the outside, and Liam's lad tenth toward the inside, eight lengths off the lead. The opening quarter went in 23.69 seconds. Up front, Wallaka leads it a half length, fan the fire second by a length and a half to dual monarchy third by a length and a half by two lengths now as right it on the ice moves up fourth to the inside of Luke in fifth, 47.71 seconds. The time for the first half mile over to the far turn, Wallaka along the rail. Leads it by three quarters of a length. Here's Dual Monarchy to the far outside and fan the fire in between that pair as they come toward the quarter pole. Dual Monarchy moving forward. Third into second. Still a length off the lead. Wallaka still leads it. Dual Monarchy is there as they come into the short stretch. Fan the fire is third. A gap of eight more lengths then. Back to right it on the ice. Coming into the final furlong, Wallaka has a three-length lead now. Dual Monarchy has lost ground in second. Fan the Fire is still there, still fighting on and challenging for the second spot. But it is Wallaka in front for Adam Baskitza. Wallaka winning it. And then further back, it was Fan the Fire who came back toward the inside to be second at the expense of Dual Monarchy third. Striking Sparks fourth. Wallaka breaks well today and secures his front running trip and just keeps on keeping on coming down the stretch actually saved or cornered really well coming around that final turn as well and just loving the sloppy steel track today ears forward as this horse crosses the wire under Adam Biskitza and is well clear from the second place finisher it's Wallaka to get the win in the fifth.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's fifth race, number two, Wallaka, was first. Number four, Fan the Fire, was second. Number one, Dual Monarchy, was third. Number seven, Striking Sparks, was fourth. 2417 unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's fifth race, number two, Wallaka, owned by D.D. McGee, trained by Kelsey Danner, the jockey Adam Biskitsa. Wallaka, four-year-old gelded son of Malibu Moon out of St. John's River by Include, bred in Kentucky by Heaven Trees Farm. Mile of the 16th over the sloppy main track, one minute 45.62 seconds. Race five, results official. 2417, the official results. Keeneland sixth race upcoming, double and pick three wagering at start of the all main track, late pick four. Track is sloppy. Race six comes off the turf, goes a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Race six off the turf, mile and a sixteenth main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Scratch the one, Embrace Me. Scratch the four, Pleasant Passage. Scratch the five, Quality Star. Scratch number seven, Make the Boys Wink. Scratch number eight, Swoop to Finish. Scratch the 11, Papilio. And scratch the 12, Secret Statement. Please note number 13 will run. 13 story hour draws into the race. Tyler Gaffalione will ride as programmed, but that means there is a jockey change on the 10. Number 10 strikingly spun the jockey Joel Rosario. 10 strikingly spun Joel Rosario. All main track, late pick four coming up.
Race six is coming up next to kick off that late pick four sequence. This race was originally carded on the turf at a mile and a 16th, and now will run on this main sloppy track as all of our turf events have been taken off the turf this afternoon. This race is an allowance race, and we'll start the conversation off with the number two, Rowtown, who seems like a filly that can really do well on many different surfaces. She actually broke her maiden. She won her first race down at Gulfstream last February when she was fourthly place that was sprinting on the dirt her next win came on the synthetic at Gulfstream Park sprinting and then she would go on to win back-to-back -back performances at Gulfstream as well one on the all-weather and one on the turf I always find that when a horse can win on multiple surfaces it means they're actually pretty good usually horses they kind of tend to do well on one surface sometimes you get a turf horse that can run well on the synthetic or vice versa but I think it's really telling that this horse has managed to win on three different surfaces and at multiple distances. So the two row town, I think, should be able to show speed from the inside. She has a lot of class to her, and she comes into this race off of having a really strong winter down in Gulfstream. And for what it's worth, I've just kind of been paying attention to uh, which circuits horses are coming out of, which circuits have been the strongest. And I think Florida has been strong. Gulfstream and Tampa and then obviously those turfway races as well have been pretty strong so the two row town the fact that she comes out of uh, all three of those wins were at Gulfstream I think uh, levels her up a little bit too let's take a look at the three spansive and when this race was originally on the turf I actually picked her on top I thought that she, her, some of her performances have been very impressive I didn't love that she has been for, or she's been uh, taken off the pace in the past couple of starts. Her first two races came going gate to wire, and if she can get back to that speed today, I think that will be the difference maker. Someone has to keep the two row town honest on the front end if she's going to win this race. Now, she did have a horrendous trip last time out. She was down on the inside. She checked hard coming down the stretch, but she still was off the pace in the early stages of the race. Now, two back at Gulfstream in that uh, allowance race, she didn't get out of the gate really well, and that's why she found herself so far back. So with a clean trip, and a, a clean gate break, I would anticipate this filly to be forwardly placed. She has a lot of talent. She just kind of have to has to overcome those hiccups. And then we'll go to the outside, the number 13, Story Hour. And this is a mare that was praying for rain because she was entered as a main track only entrant, so she gets what she wants today at odds of 5-2. to two. And she as well comes in off of a victory last time out over a sloppy seal track at Oakland. But she has prior record here at Keeneland. She almost won against Starter Allowance Company back in the fall of last year, and it was a really good effort. So I at least like to see two things, that she can, she likes the track here, she has prior experience at Keeneland, but also she can handle a wet track, and we saw that uh, happen in her most recent start over that sloppy seal track at Oaklawn Park. She's another one, though, that she, I think, has to really be asked out of the gate in order to run with the likes of the two row town. She kind of seems like a horse that's better when she's on the lead, and I don't know that she makes it today, even with the likes of Tyler Gaffleon. But we'll see what the strategy is, what the approach is. She looks to maintain her record here with back-to-back -back wins. We'll see what she can do at five to two. 14 minutes out from the next race. Race six kicks off that late pick four. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's sixth race, the Mulholland Springs. This race comes off the turf, goes a mile and a sixteenth on the sloppy main track. Allowance for fillies and mares age four and up, double and pick three, wagering and start of the all main track, late pick four. Scratch the one, embrace me. Also scratch the four, pleasant passage. Scratch the five, quality star. Also scratch the seven, make the boys wink. The eight, swoop to finish. And scratch the 11, Papilio, and the 12, Secret Statement. A reminder, number 13, Story Hour draws into the race. Tyler Gaffalione will ride. But there is a jockey change on the 10, strikingly spun Joel Rosario. 10, strikingly spun the rider Joel Rosario. Post time, 7 minutes. Competitive group coming up next in the sixth race. I still really like the two, uh, Rowtown as the top selection, but I wanted to talk about this filly, Strikingly Spun, because we haven't seen her in quite some time, and she really does look fit here coming off the layoff for trainer Joe Sharp. She looks like she's really just floating on top of the surface right now over the sloppy sealed track. So Tyler Gaffleon was named on two horses on the 10, Strikingly Spun, and the main track only entrant, the 13, Story Hour. He was committed to the 13. So he winds up on that horse. And Joel Rosario picks up the likes of Strikingly Spun. Uh, when I look at her record, I obviously, when you go back and look at her maiden debut, or her maiden score, excuse me, she did happen to win on a muddy sealed track. Now, that track was very different than the track that she's racing on today. But she actually has at least shown an affinity for a wet track in the past. The question is whether or not she's going to be fit and ready to go off the layoff. Uh, I think she looks fit, for sure, and I think she looks competitive against this group. And another thing to like about her form is that in the latter half of her three-year-old season, she looked like she was getting better. The waters got deeper. She had to go against older company as a three-year-old, and she finished the year off really, really well. Now, she hasn't been seen since then, but I think she can maybe be a factor here at a bigger price at five to one. I really thought she made a nice appearance on the track today. But still, the top pick is going to be the two row town for me in the sixth race. It's a competitive allowance race coming up next to start the late pick four.
take one for the team, you know. <laughs> Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's sixth race, the Mulholland Springs, at a mile and a sixteenth on the main track, start of the all-main track late pick four. Moving into line, race six. Woohoo, Jackie Blue coming forward, three more to load. Stir Crazy goes in, two left. Here's Strikingly Spun, that leaves Story Hour, the last one coming forward. Goes in, first wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Rotown. Rotown right out for the early lead. Story Hour comes away in second. There's Spancy right there up close in the opening strides as well. But Rotown is the leader. Gets over and latches onto the rail around the first turn and has the early lead. It is Rotown on top by a length and a half. Story Hour goes second by two. Spancy is third. Stays a lane off the rail. Room at the inside for Woohoo Jackie Blue who moves up closer fourth and challenges for that third spot. Stir Crazy is next to last off the first turn. It's strikingly spun will be the early trailer open and quarter went 23.75 seconds. They head up the back stretch. And it is Rotown the leader. But here's Story Hour drawing alongside. Just a half length separates the top two now. And woohoo, Jackie Blue still moving up the rail. Now has third, a length and a half off the lead. Third, a half length. Spancy fourth on the outside of that one. Then a gap of nearly five more lengths. Back to the two trailers. Stir Crazy, who is joined by strikingly spun through an opening half mile in 47.73 seconds. That pair now starting to catch up with the rest as they head to the far turn. But back up front, still side by side for the lead. It is Rotown to the inside and Story Hour to the outside. A half length separates that. That pair and woohoo Jackie Blue is changing lanes has been on the rail now is toward the outside third a length and a half off the leader around the far turn they're at the quarter pole stir crazy tries to get involved here but is still fourth has to angle to the center of the track six from the front and then strikingly spun a long way back to Spancy who's dropped out of it they turn into the short stretch wrote down the leader woohoo Jackie Blue from the outside and story hour to the inside and stir crazy fourth on the grandstand side final furlong for row town and woohoo Jackie Blue and then Stir crazy, but it's going to be Rotown, and Rotown wins for Junior Alvarado's second win on the card. Close for second. It will either be Stir Crazy or Woohoo Jackie Blue for that runner up spot. As you heard Kurt Becker mention, Junior Alvarado with two wins on today's card. And this horse, this is a beautiful ride. He just broke sharply, uh, put her forwardly placed, made all the other competitors chase in her wake, especially coming down the lane here. She kind of swapped over to the wrong lead, but that didn't seem to bother her whatsoever. She maintains to pick up the victory here at 5-2, to two, taking the field gate to wire for trainer Brian Lynch and making it four in a row on her record.
The unofficial results of Keeneland sixth race, number two, Rowtown finished first. Number nine, Stir Crazy was second. Number six, Woohoo Jackie Blue was third. Number 10, Strikingly Spun was fourth. Two, nine, six, ten, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland sixth race, the Mulholland Springs, number two, Rowtown, owned by Raroma Stable of Rahendra Maharaj, trained by Brian Lynch. Two wins today for jockey Junior Alvarado. Rowtown, a four-year-old Motown filly out of Run for Row by a fleet Alex spread in Kentucky by Rahendra Maharaj. The mile of the 16th over the main track listed sloppy, one minute 46.13 seconds. In the winter circle, the Mulholland Springs Trophy presentation to the connections of Rotown. Race six results official two nine six ten. The official results. Keeneland seventh race upcoming. Double and pick three wagering featured here. Starts the last of the day's rolling pick threes. All races on the main track, which is listed sloppy. In this seventh event, scratch number three, Cook Creek. And also scratch number eight, My Romeo Lima. Again, scratch three, Cook Creek, and scratch eight, My Romeo Lima. A reminder, looking ahead to the eighth race, race eight comes off the turf mile and an eighth main track race eight off the turf a mile and an eighth main track track is sloppy
Moving right along to race seven here at Caitlin Racecourse. It's a $30,000 claiming event, a mile and a 16th on the main track as well. And just one scratch of the three Cook Creek here, excuse me, two scratches, the three and the eight, My Romeo Lima, as we're taking a look at the number 10, Harold's Cloud for trainer Tom Amos. I didn't think that there was a tremendous amount of speed in this race, and I thought that this horse could maybe take advantage of that. The four has some early speed, but the 10, Harold's Cloud, I think, might be the, the classier of uh, the, the speed in here. And I always think that when you, when a, a you know, a race shapes up like it's looking like there's maybe two speed horses. You always try to go with one of those two speed horses. And the 10 Herald's Cloud, I think, really fits the bill here. Could get that nice pressing trip. Uh, last time out, competed going a distance of ground at the fairgrounds. And I thought, you know, it was unfortunate to have to chase the pace that day. This horse clearly looks like a better horse when he can get the lead. And I think just the way that this race shapes up. He should be able to get what he wants on the lead with Edgar Morales for trainer Tom Amos. He's going to be the top selection as we take a look at the number seven, Santiamo, Sant Antimo, excuse me, Sant Antimo. First off, the claim for Jesus Esquivel. This horse ran really gamely last time out just to lose by uh, a neck in that event. He rallied from off of the pace. He got somewhat of a brisk pace in front of him to set up for that um, closing kick, but and he doesn't necessarily get that today, but he doesn't always have to find himself so far off the pace, especially when you look at his dirt races against tougher company. He rated just about a length or two off of some of the front run there. So he seems like a very versatile sort, sort, excuse me, and Jesus Esquivel, of the limited horses that he's brought here over the course of the past couple of meets, they actually have done very well. So one to look out for first off the claim for the new connections, Tyler Gaffleone gets the call today. Finally, the number nine, American Hero. We haven't seen this horse since the spring of last year. So the big question is whether or not this horse will be fit and ready to go off the layoff. It's also not necessarily encouraging to see a horse that hasn't been seen in a year come back for the tag, which is the case with this horse. He's in for 30000 where he had been competing against Allowance Optional Claiming Company before in the past. He's probably not going to win the two other then, so it seems like this is probably a better spot for him. The one thing that's working against him, though, is the lack of, I shouldn't say the lack of pace. There's definitely legitimate pace. I just don't know that that pace is going to come back to him today. He has some class, but he is a deep closer. He doesn't possess any early speed. So David Cohen is really going to have to get working on him early to be a factor in this event at 9-1. to one. But I thought his class was intriguing to merit some respect for the top three. But it goes, my top selection is the 10 in this competitive claiming race coming up next. It's the 7th heading out to the main track at the distance of a mile and the 16th. We'll take a closer look at some of these horses trackside and report in just a few moments. Good luck.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's seventh race, claiming race three year olds and up for a price of $30,000. Double and pick three away. Drink starts the last of the day's rolling pick three. Scratch number three, Cook Creek. And also scratch number eight, My Romeo Lima. Mile and a 16th over the sloppy main track. Race will finish in the short stretch of the first wire. An all main track pick three getting underway here in race seven and an all main track double. Post time at eight minutes. What a good betting race coming up next. And the board reflects that as we have horses on the board at three to one, four to one, seven to two. Co, uh, actually, third choice is there. The five and the seven are both on the board at seven to two. So that just shows you how good this race is. And the six CFV bullet was a horse I did not use in my top three. But I actually would change my mind a little bit after looking at him on the track. He makes a lovely appearance. And he does finally get back to the two turn distance which I think is a little bit better he kind of lagged behind the field last time out at Turfway but he doesn't really look like he's built to sprint and clearly in that last race he didn't look like he wanted any part of that sprint distance so now second start off the layoff he stretches out to two turns but just made a really lovely appearance here on the track as he is warming up certainly one to consider and then we'll transition over to the number one Liam the Brave for Jesus Esquivel this is a horse who comes out of a second place performance at Turfway Park last time out. Technically, he is taking a step up in class, but this horse has some back races on the dirt that would merit some respect. Uh, his best figure ever uh, was a, a 71 buyer speed figure on the main track, and uh, I think that would definitely stack up against the competition today. The reason why I point him out, and he looks good warming up on the track, but the sons and daughters of Liam's map, they tend to do very well on a wet track, so maybe that's some food for thought for the one Liam the Brave. He looks like a horse that will be picking up the pieces late, and this very competitive claiming race, race seven, is next. We are five minutes out. Good luck.
Horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's seventh race. Moving into line, race seven. Stir that pot and American Hero move into line. Yono comes forward. Harold's Cloud, the last to load, going in. First wire at the post. And they're off. An American hero went to his knees at the start and unseated the rider. Number nine, American hero went to his knees and unseated the rider coming out of the gate. There goes Stir That Pot. Stir That Pot moves up, takes the early lead. Harold's Cloud comes away, running in second. Cote d'Ivoire is third toward the inside. CFE Bullet moves up from fourth up on the outside, about five lengths off the early lead around the first turn. Sant Antimo stays a lane off the rail and moves forward into the fifth position now as they move on to the back stretch. Liam the Brave loses one spot toward the inside in sixth, and Yono is last of the seven as they move up the back stretch, opening quarter 23. Point seven second stirred that pot is the leader at Harold's Cloud is second stirred that pot midpoint of the back stretch leads at a length and a half Harold's Cloud is second and then there's a gap of nearly eight more legs to CFE Bullet who tries to get going to cut into that margin from third at the entrance to the far turn and Liam the Brave moves up between horses into fourth Sant Antimo fifth up on the outside then Cote d'Ivoire comes next and Yono who moves up one spot from last with a lot of running to do from there 47.11 the time for the first First half mile and stirred that pot as the leader chased by Harold's Cloud. The leader's coming to the quarter pole, leads it by three lengths. Stir that pot on top, but Harold's Cloud is coming, and CFE Bullet is trying to get geared up. It swings out to the far outside. Still five lengths from the front, the top of the short stretch here. They turn for home. Liam the Brave is fourth, still seven lengths away. Stirred that pot is the leader coming toward the final furlong. Liam the Brave up the inside. Yono down the center of the track. CFE Bullet is there, and then Harold's Cloud, and Yono is rolling down the outside for Luan Machado to the lead, and to the winner's circle goes Yono. The Juan Machado aboard for the victory. CFE bullet across the wire in second. Harold's Cloud was third and stirred that pot was fourth. Previous success on a wet track is always important. This horse, Yono, came into the race two for two on a wet track. Now three for three as he totally dominates against this group, taking the overland route, passing all of these horses very easily in the end. Luan Machado wrapping up 
in the late stages of the stretch here to win easily. Five, six, the unofficial top two finishers of race seven. Unofficial results of Keeneland's seventh race. Number five, Yono, finished first. Number six, CFV Bullet was second. Number 10, Harold's Cloud, third. Number four, Stirred That Pot was fourth. Five, six, ten, four, unofficial. In the winter circle for Keeneland's seventh race, number five, Yono, owned and trained by Tommy Humphreys, Luan Machado, the winning jockey. Yono, a five-year-old gelded son of Quality Road, out of possessive by Bernardini. Winter bred in Kentucky by Pine Ridge Stables Limited. Mile and a 16th over the main track listed sloppy, one minute, 46.82 seconds. Race 7 results official 56104 the official results Keeneland's 8th race upcoming race 8 comes off the turf it will go a mile and an eighth on the main track which is listed sloppy starts the last of the day's rolling doubles scratch the one ready to perform Scratch the two, Bay Street Money. Also scratch number five, the Gray Wizard. Scratch the eight, Underdressed, and the nine, Chasing the Crown. Also scratch number 10, Fort Washington. And scratch number 13, Giant Game. And the 14, Hayes Strike. Overweight, the seven, Gunton Row, the jockey, one pound over. Off the turf, mile and an eighth, main track, race eight.
taking a look at this field here in the paddock for the eighth race. They're going to be heading out to the main track, but this race was originally carded for the turf, so there's going to be several scratches in here. Uh, we're looking at the four Uncle Jake. This is going to be the top selection for me for trainer Carlo Vaccareza. This horse just seems to be in very good form as of late, coming into the race off of back-to-back -back wins. He first broke his maiden very impressively uh, back at Laurel in, uh, in during last year. That impressed the connection so much that they stepped up and tried, uh, you know, their, themselves against Graded Stakes Company and the Wood Memorial. But since then, he's been... Uh, you know, I feel like he's come back to his best form in his last two starts. He ran on the main track of the fairgrounds two starts back and then followed it up with a win on the synthetic all-weather surface at Turfway going back or going gate to wire. He is probably the fastest early if he gets pace pressure. It probably comes from the seven Gunton row. I think these two horses could maybe go out to the front end. And uh, again, when I look like a, when I see a race that, suggests there's two speed horses i'm probably going to go with one of those two speed horses uh, which would be the four uncle jake but the seven gunton row his last race wasn't great but it was stepping up against really tough stakes company last time out uh two starts back i thought it was a very successful trip there he outran his odds at 20 to 1 and uh, this is a horse that can sometimes be a little bit inconsistent, but on his best day, I think he can fire his best shot here against this competition. The biggest question is whether or not he's going to be able to take a liking to this type of sloppy main track. He is definitely bred for it. He's a son of gun runner, has a very high Tomlinson number in terms of his... Uh, uh, you know, his, his breeding to like a wet track. So Gunton Rowe could definitely take a step forward on this particular surface. And then the 11 Santorini for trainer Rudy Brisset. He's another horse that isn't slow, uh, but I don't know that he's fast enough to make the lead going against some of these other horses here. He did take the field gate to wire when he won at Turfway two starts back, ran very well against Stakes Company on the all-weather at Turfway last time out, finishing a fading third in that event. So you could argue that he has class coming into this race, and I do like the fact that he won't be too far off of the pace um, in this race because it's a smaller field and right now the favorite at three to two the 12 limited liability it's just hard to take that type of price on a horse that has never tried the main track he's only tried the turf and he also doesn't have any speed horses that have a turn of foot that provoke a proverbial turn of foot on the turf that doesn't always translate well to the main track so i do think that this is a questionable favorite especially at three to two definitely some other alternatives we'll take a closer look at some of these horses when they come trackside. We're 14 minutes out from race eight.
Oh, sure. Let me punch for the horses and then I'll do Star Wars, okay? I don't want to do that. That's okay. You still have to go. The horses are entering the track for Keeneland's eighth and featured race, the Cove Springs, an allowance for four-year-olds and up in a race which comes off the turf and goes a mile and an eighth on the main track, which is listed sloppy. Scratch the one, ready to perform. Scratch the two, Bay Street Money. Also scratch the five, the Gray Wizard. Scratch number eight, underdressed. The nine, chasing the crown. The 10, Fort Washington. And scratch the 13, giant game and the 14, Hayes Strike. Overweight, the 7, Gunton Row, the jockey one pound over. This will start the last of the day's rolling doubles, post time at seven minutes. Taking a closer look at your favorite right now, six to five on the 12, limited liability in our featured event coming up next. And I don't know, I just can't, this horse looks great on the track, I'm not gonna lie, but I just can't take six to five on a, a horse that's a turf horse on running on the dirt today. Um, and also it's one thing if a turf horse find them, finds themselves forwardly placed, if that's their running style or they sit a mid-pack trip. But this horse shows absolutely no speed on the turf course. And sometimes, most often, that doesn't really transfer over to the main track. I can't say anything negatively about this horse. He probably would have won if this race was still on the turf, but he's not on the turf today. He's on the dirt. So I think there is an opportunity to go against the favorite here at seven to five. But physically, he looks great. He's on his toes. He's amped up. He's ready to roll. Uh, another horse to maybe consider, the number six, Quadra Island. Now, this horse has only one start on a fast main track. He actually finished second in that event. That was at Churchill three starts ago, back in November of last year. Now, he was soundly defeated. It was just a field of six, and he lost by over eight lengths in that race. It was a very strung out field, but he still ran an 81 buyer speed figure, and that actually would be competitive against this group today. I thought he looked really racy on the track, looks good. He doesn't necessarily have a lot of speed, so the same case could be made for, uh, or the same obstacle is for this horse as it is for the favorite, but we're talking about 11 to one versus seven to five. So I'd be willing to take more of a shot on a horse like this. He looks like he's really skipping over the surface right now too in the preliminary warmups, Axel Concepcion aboard for trainer John Ortiz. He gets this horse for the first time uh, who was previously trained by Brad Cox. So maybe just some food for thought. I thought the six Quadra Island really warming up nicely on the track today. We'll see if the favorite can get the job done. And the first start on a sloppy main track, seven to five on your favorite. Favorite, the number 12 limited liability.
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's eighth and featured race, the Cove Springs, at a mile and an eighth on the main track. Moving into line, race eight. El Caban goes in. Uncle Jake. Quadra Island and three more to load. Gunton Row. Santorini moves into line. Limited liability, the last one. Going in, they're at the post. And they're off in the feature. There's Uncle Jake right out for the early lead. Uncle Jake straight to the front with Santorini away running in second. Quandra Island gets over to the rail from third. There's Gunton Rowe who angles outward from the rail, stays toward the outside heading into the first turn in the fourth position. Limited liability is in fifth. And El Cabong last of the six. They swing around the turn, head for the back stretch. Uncle Jake, the leader. Uncle Jake on top leads it by almost to full length. And here's Santorini inching forward now, just off the leader's flank. Second a length and a half. Gunton Rowe outward from the rail, still in third. Third by three quarters of a length. And then Quadra Island is fourth. The opening quarter, 24.21 seconds. Gap of six more lengths back to limited liability. And a similar margin back of that one to El Cabong, who trails for that move up the back stretch here at Keeneland this afternoon as Uncle Jake shows the way. Uncle Jake leads it by three quarters of a length. Santorini second a length and a half. Quadra Island moves up third Moves by to the inside of Gunton Row. Now, Gunton Row is still outward from the rail, headed at the far turn in the fourth position. Three lengths off the lead. Better than a dozen lengths now back to Limited Liability, who is far, far back on the final turn. El Cabong three more lengths behind that one. It was 48.02 seconds for the first half mile. Uncle Jake is the leader. Leads it still by three lengths as they move for the top of the stretch. They're coming to the quarter pole. Quadra Island is second by five. Santorini is third. Eight more lengths then. About Back to Gunton Row, who is far back. El Cabong has moved by that one to the inside. A distant fourth. Limited liability moves up one spot. A distant fifth. Final furlong for Uncle Jake. A five, six-length lead. Uncle Jake, Joel Rosario at the 16th pole. No one close. It is Uncle Jake who's going to romp on home to win the feature. It's going to be a battle for second. El Cabong is coming up the inside to try to grab second and does. El Cabong, that rail move late, got second at the expense of Quadra Island in third. And then Santorini was fourth. Four, three, six, unofficially across the finish line as we see the four Uncle Jake take it to the field early under Joel Rosario. This horse broke forwardly, maintained that front running position and took the field gate to wire in the end and really kicking home clear and just a uh, big margin of victory here. In the end, ears forward, looks like a happy horse crossing the finish line. First in the end at 8 to 5. 4, 3, 6, 11 unofficially across the finish for the eighth race here at Keeneland.
The unofficial results of Keeneland's featured eighth race, number four, Uncle Jake finished first, number three, El Cabong second, number six, Quadra Island was third, and the 11, Santorini, was fourth. Four, three, six, 11, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's featured eighth race, the Cove Springs, number four, Uncle Jake, owned by Vacareza Racing LLC of trainer Carlo Vacareza, owned also by JKX Racing of Joseph Klausa. Joel Rosario, the winning jockey, Uncle Jake, four-year-old Ridgeling by Uncle Mo, out of Tasha's Miracle by Harlan's Holiday, the winner bred in Kentucky by Budget Stable. The Keeneland November Horses of Racing Age sales graduate gets the mile and an eighth over the main track listed sloppy today in 1 minute 50.67 seconds and the results official. 43611, the official results. In the winner's circle, the Cove Springs trophy presentation for the feature to the connections of Uncle Jake. Keeneland's ninth and final race upcoming. This race at a mile and a 16th on the sloppy main track. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Carry over for the Toyota Super High Five, $7,472. Scratch number one, Dreaming Always. And scratch the five, Marco Sunsets. Jockey for the two, Laser Jet, Axel Concepcion. That's the two, Laser Jet, the jockey, Axel Concepcion.
Ninth and final race is upon us here at Keeneland Racecourse. $20,000 claiming race for horses who have never won two races lifetime. A mile and a sixteenth on the main sloppy track. And I went to the six upswell as the top pick here right now on the board at six to one. So it, when you look at this filly's most recent performances, you might think, okay, well, maybe she improved getting to the turf. I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think she improved because she dropped in class. Some of her dirt races, she was going against Maiden Special Weight Company and actually good competition at the maiden special weight level at Churchill Downs as she finally broke her maiden last time out going wire to wire and somewhat of a slow pace but it was also over a yielding turf course and I like I said I don't think it was the turf it might have helped a little bit but I think it was the fact that she dropped in class she's not necessarily a bred to handle the turf course she has somewhat of a dirt pedigree so I think this is the perfect spot for her coming back to the main track I don't know that she's going to be on the lead today I don't think it matters I think she just was much the best against that field last time out but hopefully she can find herself in a forward position today the number 10 horse, Perfectly Wicked, is another horse that I think merits respect. She's six to five right now. I'm not surprised to see that. This is a filly that's coming out of Tough Allowance Company, even Stakes Company, two starts back. But the thing is, I looked at those races and I knew that she would probably be overbet a bit because of the fact that she's gone against Stakes Company. But she was soundly defeated in those races. She lost by nine lengths last time out. She lost by nine and a quarter lengths prior to that, six and a half lengths prior to that. So clearly she's not able to compete at the allowance or stakes level in Laurel in Maryland. And this is the right type of spot for her. This is aggressive placement. But I just don't know that there's a lot of value there at six to five. She also doesn't have a lot of speed, so she's going to have to come with that closing kick, and that doesn't always, that type of running style uh, isn't always easy to win with on the main track here at Keeneland. The number three, Vivid Exposure is a horse that should be forwardly placed. Now, the question is the stamina. This horse is uh, coming out of consecutive sprints at uh, Turfway Park over the all-weather surface. This horse, I'm throwing her underneath in the top three here because of one race that I thought was interesting against Maiden Special Weight Company. She did go the mile. She showed speed. She hung on for a piece of it. She finished fourth. That was in her uh, distance race at Presque Isle. It's a crazy pick. I would not pick her to win, but I would maybe pick her underneath if you're looking to bet uh, a trifecta in this race and just throw some big prices in underneath to try to beef up those exotic wagers. But we'll see what she can do. I'll take a closer look at some of these fillies as they come po- trackside, excuse me, but it's a competitive group as we are 15 minutes out from the ninth and final race as the rain continues to come down here in Lexington, Kentucky.
Horses are entering the track for Keeneland's ninth and final race, a claiming race for fillies and mares age three and up for a price of $20,000. A mile and a 16th over the main track listed sloppy. Race will finish in the short stretch at the first wire. Carryover for the Toyota Super High Five, $7,472. Scratch number one, Dreaming Always. And scratch the five, Marco Sunsets. A reminder, the jockey for number two, Laser Jet, is Axel Concepcion. That's the two, Laser Jet, the jockey, Axel Concepcion. Post time in six minutes. Just a couple more horses to look at and maybe consider for the ninth and final race here as we are five minutes out. The seven, Lynetta, was not a horse that I used in my top three selections. I know my co-worker and Scott Hazleton loved this horse in the finale here, and I actually thought she really made a lovely appearance for trainer Tom Amos. First off the claim for Tom, and obviously owned by Maggie Moss today. Her only start on the main track was at the fairgrounds back in January over a good listed track. Now, it wasn't the toughest field. It was just a field of five. It was an off-the-turf event, but she did it really well. She blew the doors off that field to go on to win by over five lengths in the end. So maybe she can step up to the plate here. This seems like, a, you know, a, definitely a competitive group of fillies, but if she can hit the ground running, maintain that front running position, she could be a threat here at four to one. And I just really liked how she was warming up on the track under Edgar Morales today. The number nine rock star doctor was another one that caught my eye. Uh, she is nine to two on the board right now for trainer Mike Maker. When you look at her back races, uh, I actually thought that was a very tough starter allowance race, two starts back. Her maiden victory was very solid uh, against maiden $30,000 claiming company. So again, she wasn't one that I necessarily used in the top three when I was handicapping the race, but I thought she had a lot of confidence to her on the track today. So the nine rock star doctor. Very competitive group, but right now the betting public making your favorite the 10 perfectly wicked at seven to five we'll see what happens at for the ninth and final race we are three minutes out
The horses have reached the starting gate for Keeneland's ninth and final race. Moving into line for the ninth race. Rockstar Doctor comes forward. Missy B moves into line. Perfectly Wicked goes in. Upswell coming forward. Altera will be the last to load. Last one goes in. First wire at the post. And they're off. There goes Upswell with Lanetta. These two come forward in the opening strides. Vivid Exposure comes away running in third. And then Missy B is fourth. Blue Guitar is fifth up on the outside as they head into the first turn. Vivid Exposure against the rail, saves the ground, has the lead by just a neck. Upswell, then Lanetta stacks up in third to the far outside. Blue Guitar angles to the inside to save some ground in fourth around the first turn. Missy B is in fifth position. Perfectly wicked. Three wide around the turn near the back of the pack is in sixth spot onto the back stretch. Laser Jet is in seventh. Rockstar Doctor is eighth. Altira is last of the nine as they make the move up the back stretch here at Keeneland in the night cap. And there's Upswell for the lead. Upswell, midpoint of the back stretch, has the lead now by three quarters of a length. Vivid Exposure to the inside is there to challenge for second and is challenged in turn by Lanetta. Lanetta stays toward the outside, takes second by a neck from Vivid Exposure, who travels in third toward the inside. Blue Guitar is up close in fourth, three lengths off the lead, gap of three more. Rockstar Star Doctor is in fifth. Laser Jet sixth. Missy B is in seventh position. Altira is eighth. And perfectly wicked. Last of the nine as they move midway on the far turn. Upswell the leader. Lanetta second. A length separates them. Rockstar Doctor around the far turn is trying to find some running room. It swings to the far outside now. And Rockstar Doctor starts gearing up to come after Upswell. Blue guitar between that pair as they straighten away for home. And Laser Jet has come from deep in the back and is fourth up on the outside and now third and coming after Rockstar Doctor. Laser Jet outside, then upswell back toward the inside. Rockstar Doctor upswell to the inside. Laser Jet on the outside. Rockstar Doctor wins it for Tyler Gaffalione. Laser Jet was across the line in second, followed by upswell in third. Blue Guitar in fourth. Altira was fifth.
Well, she was very dirty today, but that didn't seem to matter as rock star doctor closes from off of the pace under Tyler Gaffleon. Right here, she got the jump on the field, making a little bit of an early move, but she was dirty. Her blinkers were covered. They didn't look white anymore, but she went on to win by just over a length in the end. Very impressively here for trainer Mike Maker. She gets the win under jockey Tyler Gaffleon at odds of 5-1. to one. It's going to be 9-2-6 unofficially across the finish line for the nightcap. Unofficial results of Keeneland's ninth race. Number nine, Rockstar Doctor finished first. Number two, Laser Jet was second. Number six, Upswell third. Number eight, Blue Guitar fourth. Number 11, Altira fifth. Nine, two, six, eight, 11, unofficial. In the winner's circle for Keeneland's ninth and final race, number nine, Rockstar Doctor, owned by the Chase and Dream stable of Jeffrey Columbro, trained by Mike Maker, the jockey, Tyler Gaffleon. Rockstar Doctor, three-year-old filly by Connect, and advanceable by Street Sense, bred in Kentucky by Green Lantern Stables. Mile and a sixteenth, one minute 47.97 seconds over the main track listed sloppy. Race 9, results official. 926811, the official results. Pick six pays on six of six with a consolation five of six. The late pick five, five of five with a consolation four of five. And no carryover for the Toyota Super High Five. Live racing set to resume here at Keeneland tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. This reminder, the second floor grandstand, including the sports bar and the mezzanine bar, will remain open for another 30 minutes. And you may advance wager any races occurring after that time. For now, on behalf of Keeneland, thank you and good evening.